they said they had a surprise for me. What a wonderful surprise. Thank you. So uh, Jessica, who helped us organize all of this, you know, I sent my slides last night. She goes, hey, nobody else has got slides. I said, I'm the trailblazer. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, what there we go, there we go. <laughs> so I have great news for you. I'm the last one. <laughs> I've got bad news for you. I don't know how I'm gonna be so original. <laughs> after all those great speeches. But uh, what an inspiring day and evening, and a privilege for me to come home and uh, celebrate with um, all these great leaders, with all of you, with the great team from Catalyst, and uh, to the corporate partners of this evening and who are supporting diversity and inclusion. There's so much talk about what we need to do, but ultimately, it takes leadership and it takes investment. So let's give a big round to everyone who has contributed to tonight. As I thought about tonight in my remarks, I reflected on my own career journey. How did I go from sitting where many of you young uh, people are? Tanya, thank you for calling me a young person today. I appreciate that. You know, I sat 25 years ago in Pamela Jeffrey's WXN conferences like we had today, and here I am. So my remarks to tonight are really for those that have begun their journey and are kind of maybe in that middle road, and you're probably saying, how? How do I keep going and progressing? Um, at the end of the day, I'm here because of amazing trailblazers who paved the way for me. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, sorry. So I usually do this on my iPhone, but you know what's wrong now? I can't see it. <laughs> I gotta work on, on a new technique. I'm not used to, uh, to doing cards, so. One second, one second, there we go, okay. There are so many that I could acknowledge that I will, I'm not here, I'm only here because of, uh, of tennis. Everything in my professional life has come from tennis, and so I'm gonna talk tennis uh, and celebrate these great women. <clears throat> I talked earlier today about the unsung heroes of women's professional tennis, the original nine. In 1970, they stood up to the establishment. The guys were making 12,000, the women were making 2,000, and then they said it wasn't, wasn't right. They were the leaders and the birth of women's professional tennis. In 1973, Billie Jean was winning Grand Slams. <clears throat> she formed the WTA, as Brian talked about, and she lobbied for equal prize money at the US Open. Later that fall, she took on the weight of all women. Sport is a microcosm of society. This wasn't a tennis match for Billie. She knew that if she didn't beat Bobby, that it would set the advancement of women back for decades. And in 2007, I had the privilege to be part of the journey <clears throat> where it was our modern day Venus Williams who used her voice and her advocacy and we got equal pay at Roland Garros and Wimbledon. 2007, 1973, think of how long it took for that journey <clears throat> to happen. So without question, women's tennis has come a long way just as our society. However, as we talk tonight, <clears throat> we need to blaze even wider and more accessible paths for those who will follow us and those young leaders tonight who are counting on us. I mean, people in this room. Oh, we're not going to do that one. Jessica didn't want to do that one. There we go. <laughs> just in the interest of time. If I reflect on the original nine, on Billy, on Venus, those and thousands of amazing trailblazers, the unsung heroes. I'm sure there are many in the room asking yourself, how can I, as one person, make a difference in achieving equality and inclusion in my world? <clears throat> how can I use my voice? I'm going to share one real story. And it happened again to me today, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, a few years ago, I, I was up 
up here. I was uh, doing a workshop for female sports leaders. And during that workshop, I talked about my setbacks, what wasn't fair, what wasn't right, what wasn't acceptable, and how to play the game with integrity. A few months after that workshop, one of the attendees, Leanne Nicole, broke her silence and went forward with the sexual harassment charges against the president of the Canadian Olympic Committee. Six days later, he was out. And so you just never know. A little encouragement, guidance from me to think that that would help to be a catalyst for that young woman to have the courage and the bravery to change Canadian sport and the lives of so many. Your contributions can be small. They don't have to be as big as Billy's and Venus's. And it's the aggregate of everyone in this room where we will achieve what we want to. That was me, a little underserved kid. Not, it's not me, but he was cuter than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Every day for me, it's about opportunity. Sport is an amazing gift that you can give to your kids. 92% of women in leadership positions played sport. 50% of Fortune 500 CEOs played competitive sport. Where is Maddie from Detroit, Deloitte, Deloitte? Where is she? Maddie came up to me today and said, thank you. She's a national team member who wasn't supported through our macro system, but Deloitte helped her realize her dreams. And it's all about giving these opportunities for more Maddies through sport. <clears throat> so as we depart tonight, I'd ask each of you, as, as Bill said, to think about how can you make a difference? How will you have the courage and take the risk necessary. Talk today that those kind of in the middle of the path are nervous about having the courage and taking the risk. But the time is now to make our values and our voices heard. It's far too important a time to be silent. A better and more inclusive and equal Canada starts with each and every one of us. I know <clears throat> that this country can do it. I know from the passion today that we will do it. Go Canada, go. Thank you.